事だから失いたくないから隠して装ってだから誰もが嘘をつくけれど一番の大嘘つきは俺だった。school setting is one that has been used in almost all romance series, at least for series that are being produced right now. While the setting has nothing to do with it as there are exceptions to every rule, a lot of the romance series I see surrounding the high school setting fail at branching out from what they know they are good at. Having a simple premise is fine, but when you don't build up on the strengths of the simplistic ideas, many faults can occur. I believe that is why this series succeeds so much. It makes do with what it has and goes beyond what you would expect. What's up guys, it's Kent from Spartan Media Reviews, here to review both seasons of My Teen Romantic Comedy Snafu. Orega Iru or My Teen Romantic Comedy Snafu mainly follows three characters, Hachimin the equivalent of a Debbie Downer, Yukino a pretty girl that looks somewhat pretentious, and finally Yui the fun down to earth type of girl. While you would never see these three coexist together on their own, reluctantly Hikigaya is forcibly assigned to the volunteer club in which Yukino is the only member. Yui soon follows suit and join in the club of her own volition and the story of Orega Iru begins. Snafu's first season, while being very simplistic in a lot of elements, is actually a lot deeper than I thought at the beginning of watching the show. While it has a simple structure involving our main characters and the way they solve problems, that simple structure helped branch out both our main and supporting cast. However, I do wish the internal start to the series was executed better, as they could have taken a better advantage of showcasing the main cast instead of relying on the introductions of new supporting characters. While utilizing some dramatization, the story to Snafu's first season was also pretty realistic in terms of character archetypes and overall high school life. It took advantage of the things it was good at and utilized them to their fullest potential. My favorite aspect of the first season surrounded the final episodes of the series. While I was never part of a culture festival and never will be, the interactions surrounding the event played well into real life struggles of dealing with others. It showcased how people are overly dependent on others, how people desire attention, and so on and so forth. The final episodes also helped progress our main and supporting cast more than anything else. Also, the OVA that goes along with the final season is an incredibly fun time, so if you enjoyed the first season, you might as well watch it also. As much as I love the first season of Snafu, the second season is leaps and bounds better compared to the first. It certainly was a drastic tonal shift compared to the overall tone of the first season, but thanks to the final quarter of episodes the first season contained, it progressed very smoothly into its new role. While the first season relied on introducing our cast and bringing everything up to speed, the second season moves towards deep character progression. While that is more driven to how well done the cast of this series is, the events surrounding the second season were a lot more memorable in my opinion. Things that were a lot more major in scale were taking place compared to the less significant aspects during the first season. The romance elements also started to bloom just a little, which added an extra aspect of drama to the story. Snafu 2 is an example of where the second season improves upon already good writing, much like other series that I am a fan of, including Spice and Wolf, Railgun, and Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. In reality, both seasons of my teen romantic comedy Snafu contain an overly simplistic story, revolving around the basic interactions of everyday high school life. However, thanks to the character progression and overall thinking of our cast, its story becomes all the deeper, making the cast even more mature as well, which is especially nice considering they are in a high school setting. The premise of both seasons also contain a very relatable story for lots of people. While that particularly isn't the case for me as I've been out of high school for almost five years now, the interactions with others at plenty of points hit home during many moments of the series. This was especially the case surrounding the Christmas events in Season 2. Seriously, working with groups is the worst if you are forced to, but it becomes all the worse when nothing gets accomplished and your time could be used elsewhere. Overall, the story to both seasons of Snafu, while being very simplistic on the surface, are actually a lot deeper than you will initially think. The cast of characters in this series are not only memorable, but are very well written as well. The main cast consisting of Hiki, Yukino, and Yui are such a fantastic group. I like describing the main cast like like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Hiki and Yukino are the pieces of bread and Yui is the peanut butter and jelly holding it together. Once one falls apart, it becomes apparent that the other two must work on some aspect of themselves to keep the status quo in check. Hiki is a bland character at first, which is a good thing as he has possibilities to branch out and become a well-developed character. He is an emotionally unstable person in a way, but thanks to Yukino, Yui, and the supporting cast, he starts to cooperate with others and become a positive person. Yuki is just like Hiki, being very restrictive in terms of emotional capacity 
capacity. While Yui has an extremely outgoing personality, which makes her emotions a lot more manipulative. Putting these three together created situations where each character strengthens themselves off the positives and negatives of the others. As a whole, the entire cast was well done in terms of development and personality, each exhibiting their own traits, even if they are part of a certain trope. I think this series is one of the few times where I didn't dislike any character in a series. I even like the little sister archetype, and I usually hate that trope more than anything. Also, the Chinibio used the Gollum cough from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, which is an awesome reference, so points for that as well. Snafu's animation is a tale of two studios, Brains Base and Studio Feel. The first season, while having a very simple art style, was animated like any other Brains Base series, consisting of both good and bad moments in my eyes. The characters, while very simplistic and similar to a lot of series, were nice and personality driven. As a whole, I had no problems with the first season's animation. However, I certainly was more of a fan of the second season's overall production. While the first season relied on bright colors and simple details, the second season moves to a more saturated look, relying on autumn-like colors. While the character designs stayed pretty much the same, I thought it was animated better, especially at points where it looked like the series used rotoscoping, which added some added depth to the character designs. Snafu 2's use of shot composition was also very apparent, especially during any event in the club room. My goodness, do those shots look nice. Moving on to my favorite aspect of the second season's animation, lighting and use of shadows. As a person who still has trouble lighting a scene for any type of video, Snafu does this aspect so well. While it is done in an animated medium, it still is impressive how well executed it actually is. This helps play into the use of shadows that Snafu 2 does just as well. Snafu's first opening is very fun, showcasing each of our main characters with simple artistic backdrops. Snafu's second opening is also very well done, showcasing the more serious tone that the second season contains. My favorite aspect of the opening is the camera pan of Yui running to catch up to Hikigaya, which is done in quick succession. I think the only problem I found in this opening was when Yukino's hair blows in the club room, even though the window was closed. It's a minor nitpick, but it bothered me so much. Both endings of the series, while a lot more simplistic in terms of animation, are stylized very well, especially the first ending. Both of Snafu's soundtracks are like a lot of romance and slice of life series. They contain a score that is nothing over the top, but they include a few tracks that add significance to a certain scene or event. Snafu is no different, having both an upbeat and cheery style mixed along a more somber and melancholic vibe. This plays to the strengths of both tones that each season contains. I loved every single opening and ending of this series, especially the second opening. Each song captured the tone of the season they were put in, and they also had great replay value in my opinion. When it comes to the voice acting, I had no faults with it. Each character played their archetype very well, especially Yui. I mean, this is what I wish Chitoge was in Nisekoi instead of her horrible personality. Now, with everything that I have said, do I recommend watching both seasons of my teen romantic comedy Snafu? Definitely. While it is reliant on both simplicity and character tropes, it makes use with what it has and goes above and beyond what you would expect from it. Combine that with nice animation, especially in season two, and a good complimentary soundtrack, and you create a series that proves that you can make something out of very little. Spartan Media Reviews gives both seasons of my teen romantic comedy Snafu a great recommendation. If you are interested in watching both seasons of my teen romantic comedy Snafu, you can check out both seasons for free over on Crunchyroll. Now, what are your thoughts on both seasons of Snafu? Comment below. If you enjoyed this review, hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. You can also subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. I would really appreciate that as well. Follow me on Twitter at Hummingbird to keep up to date with the current things that I am doing. And with all that said, I will catch you guys in my next review. Thank you for watching.